Today we want to discuss about the how to the given a multimodal environment. So multimodal here we are, we are looking for that suppose I have the two biometric straight or more biometric straight and how to compute the false acceptance rate and false rejection rates right because I know the false acceptance rate of one system based on one type of database and another biometric straight I have is false acceptance rate and false rejection rates are known based on one another database. Now how to combine this thing to get the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate right for the combined one. So now first let us understand that how to fuse how to fuse my biometrics data right. So here this fusion I will be talking based on the score score that is the score level fusion and what are the various techniques I can use to fuse this scores. So I is the number of individuals number of subjects in your database M is the number of traits right suppose there are M traits you have really selected for fusion and N I M that for this trait of the user I that is the normalized score. Now why I am telling normalized score because as I told you the scores will not be lying between 0 and 1 some score will be lying between 0 and 1000 some will be plus x to plus y some will be minus x to plus y some will be in decimal format some will be in the integer format all those things some will be decimality score and so on. So all of them should be brought to under one umbrella so that you can combine them. So that is why we have normalized it then NIM that means the normalized score of for the trait M of the user I. So now the scores are normalized right. So for one trait I got what happens here I have a database of trait I say trait 1 and a query Q1 has come. So Q1 will be compared with this and I got some score S1, Q1 will be compared with this I got a score S2 and here I get score S I told N or something like that N right for this query 1 I got the various scores. Now this has been normalized similarly trait 2 you will be getting similar type of score say S1 prime, S2 prime and Sn prime such type of things that M, M such traits are there. Now this are normalized first simple way is that I add these scores because these are all the scores some in unit less number I add them and then I tell this is the score of this subject compared to this that this matching between these two they has the score this. Another one is that no I decide that minimum of this score I want to because I am very conservative I want to take the minimum of this score. Another could be that no I, want, I am generous I take the maximum of this and another one is the weighted average I can take right that I give for each score I give some weights. Right for trait 1 that this weight is w1 for trait 2 weight is w2 and so on. So w1 into the score plus w2 into the score and so on that will give you the total score that weight. So this basically the weighted average I want to take is it okay is it clear. First I am seeing see I have a query Q, I have the subjects S1, S2, SN, I have trade T1, T2, Tm. So Q is compared with S1 I get a score, Q is compared to S2 I get another score compared to SN I get a score. Q is compared 
with S1 against the trait 2, I get a score. Similarly, I get XF. Similarly, here I get X and M. Right? Now, all these scores are normalized. These are normalized 0 to 1, this one 0 to 1. Now, if I sum them, then I get one score. That score is that score between these two. If I sum them, I get a score, this is score between the Q and S2 and so on. Or I can think that no minimum of this will be giving you the score, or maximum of this will give you the this. Another one is that no, I want the weighted average. I put some weight against here, some weight W1, here W2, and here Wm. So this into this plus this into this plus this into this, at least where sum of the weight is 1. Now the question you will be thinking that how to get the weights. Right? So the weight can be given as see I have the T1, T2, T3, Tm. These are the things. And I have the accuracy A1, A2, A3, Am. This accuracy is known to you based on our training data set, right? Test data set, where you have obtained the FAR and FRR. These are known against each trade for a training data set. Yes, this is known. So, as I told, the accuracy is nothing but this will give you the accuracy. Right? So, for each trade you get the accuracy. Now, this let us assume that this is 99 percent, this is 98 percent, this may be 97.3 percent, this may be 96 percent and so on. Right? Now, I will have to assign the weights. So, since this is giving the highest accuracy, I should give little weight compared to this. So, I can put 99 divided by 99 plus 98.97.3 plus 96. Similarly, you put 98 divided by this weight 97.3 and this 96 point this. Right? So, you get the corresponding weights and that weights you can assign the W1, W2, W3, Wm. Is it okay? But this is an example I am giving you. There may be other ways to assign that. But what we are doing, we are putting the weights like this. Now, another issue may come up because in reality it happens. See, what we have assumed that everybody has given the data of M trade on M trades. But in reality, it is not true. Some of have given first 10 trades data. Some of them here, here like that. Because you know, somebody may not be able to give the data on the spot. His ID was not available. Some of them, the day I went to collect the data, he was not available. And like that, it may occur. So some of them will be 0 here. But that does not mean that it is not matched. It indicates that that man is absent. You can put some other value minus infinity or something like that, and corresponding the weight has to be adjusted. Correspondingly, that weight has to be adjusted. Am I right? Is it clear? You should not think that suppose it is minus infinity and you are assigning W, then you are making a mistake. W1, W2 into minus infinity give you the minus value. So if this is minus if we do not consider and the weights this weight will be adjusted among them. So, that the weights are sum of weights is 1. Is it clear? Yes. Now, suppose I want to introduce the cost on it. Then cost is cost for the false acceptance into false acceptance rate plus cost of false rejection into false rejection rate and then you can obtain what is the cost, what is the cost of your system. So, sometimes you may have to look for the minimum cost. Suppose I introduce here again cost is also involved in that, then cost becomes your weight. So, cost 
into this cost will be your weight. So, that cost you have to take into account in your competition. So, now by now you know that how to fuse the score. Also, you know what is the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate. Now, while you will be telling that I have the m number of biometric states, for each of them this is the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate. You have to tell now what is your expected false acceptance rate and false rejection rate for the fused one. Right? Fused result you have to tell that. So, here for the simplicity let us consider there are two biometric states, they are independent. Independent means that one is say face, another may be fingerprints. They are independent, they are not related. It is not that one is left eye, another one is also left eye, but another by another camera or another sensor, right. It is the two different one, one is the face, another one is fingerprint or something like that. And we want to compute, we want to compute the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate for the fusion uh, fused results right now p1 f1 let us assume that this is the false acceptance rate for the first trade first trade maybe trade t1 and p1 fr is a false rejection rate for the trade t1 p2 fa is a false acceptance rate for the trade t2 and p2 fr is the false rejection rate of the trade t2 right now, there are two possible ways you can combine the scores, right? combine the results, right. The two possible ways to combine the outcomes of the biometric test. So, one possible way that, that in both the case the person has to be successful, who has to be, be accepted. This is a decision level fusion I am talking that in both the test that for test T1, for the trade T1 he should be accepted and for trade T 2 also he should be accepted, then he is through. Another method will be that no, if he is pass in one of them, then he is accepted. Pass in one of them means if he is accepted by one trait, irrespective of the result of the other one, he is through. Right? These are the two possible ways you can fuse on at decision level. So, there are two rules, one rule is that conjunctive rule or and rule here it is telling that the subject has to be passed in or accepted by both the tests and disjunctive is the or rule where the subject will be accepted if and only if he is passed in one or at least one of them right these are the two things remember what we have considered the both the trades are independent now, we want to calculate the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate of this combined biometrics. Let us assume that P A is the false, false rejection rate of the first case A and B. Okay. False acceptance rate, false acceptance rate of the conjunctive, conjunctive case and false rejection rate of the conjunctive rate and here it is a disjunctive one and this is the false rejection rate of the disjunctive one. Now, the rule A is telling that it is the OR rule that a person will be rejected only when in both the case it is failed, right. A See OR rule means what? If it is a, he is accepted by one of them you tell that it is he is accepted, he is the genuine person. So, what rule tells that in both the cases he has to be fake, right. So, in order to obtain the false rejection rate for this case, so he has to be falsely rejected here and he has to be falsely rejected here. In If they are rejected then the false rejection will be and but both of them are independently distributed. So, probability of false rejection rate and probability of false this will be multiplied right. Then that will be your false rejection because they are independently distributed. So, I just multiply these two I get false rejection rate of the combined one. So, false rejection rate is nothing but the product of the false rejection rate of the two trades 
will give right because both of them are independently distributed. Now, what happens in the case of false acceptance for this case? See, that means he will be falsely accepted by one trait, he will be falsely accepted by another trait, and there is a common thing also that he has been accepted by falsely accepted in one trait and also in another trait. So, it will be nothing but probability of false acceptance A 1 union right, which is nothing but probability of false acceptance rate 1 plus minus right. So, this plus this minus this because they are independently distributed. So, this is for the false acceptance rate competition uh, formula for the false acceptance rate competition. Now, if the rule is and rule, and rule means that he will be falsely accepted only when both of them both the tray in both the tray in both the trades he is falsely accepted that a person will be falsely accepted only when he has been accepted falsely in both the trades and both of them are independently distributed so the formula is p1 f f a plus p2 star p2 f a and similarly you can obtain the formula of other case that falsely rejection just you replace this one by that formula you will get it. Is it ok? Yes. Now, think about that whatever I discuss that is for the verific multi model biometric system for verification. Now, let us think about the identifications. So, whatever method you follow for verification can I use it for identification right. Say what I have done for verification I get a query and corresponding subject you have gone and you match you got the matching score and based on some threshold value you tell yes or no. So, for this suppose I he is the person and you have compared with this you got the matching score matching score matching score and based on some threshold value you will be taking that accepted accepted rejected rejected accepted finally, you have drawn the conclusion right. Now, in the identification what I can do? I can also do same thing that I repeat the same process one by one because identification means once to end match. So, I will be comparing this with this, then this with this, then this with this and so on and following the you follow the same method what you have done in the case of verification. So, verification is the particularly same process you are following only the individually the on this ID you will be doing it here you do not know the ID you will be testing against all of them. So, the same process can be repeated to draw the conclusion, but here you have the big problem because you have to compare everybody. So, time is the constraint right. So, is it possible if if you can if you can control your response time and the moderately number of comparisons and other thing if you can control then you are through. So, that is the that is the reason why that exactly same method you can may not be able to use it. You may have to think little uh, different way so that you for even though you follow the same operations, but you have to get the reduce the search you have to reduce the search space so that moderate number of comparisons can be done. So, what are the different ways? you can think about it. The first one is known as sequential method. What it does? Suppose you have the M, M traits. Of course, you know that which one is the costliest one and which one is the cheapest one. You can arrange them or you can arrange with respect to the accuracy. Different word you can use 
the another method they know I arrange them with respect to the time requires right based on that you decide. So, what happens that you have got a query image and you arrange with respect to the cheapest to costliest one. So, you use the query and use the cheapest biometric straight and you select top m1 elements subjects that they are the likely to be matched. Now, you take the next costliest one and costliest straight and you use that q query with this this many subjects you forget because they are no longer the remaining n minus m1 they are not belonging to my search area right. So, q1 will be compared with this m1 elements and get the top m2 subjects. Next level what you do you take the next straight next straight means next costly straight and q1 will be compared with this m2 subjects and get the top m3 subjects and so on. Is it clear? So, if you continue after m straights you will be getting that some x number of people who are the probable candidates and who are passed against these many traits. Is it ok? This is a sequential method here there are several issues you can think first problem is that by if by any means a person has been falsely rejected you are not in the beginning itself it has been he has been falsely rejected he is out from the race right. There is no way you can get him the another one is the parallel method. So, what I do here I have a trait T 1 T 2 T m and you have query q and this query q will be matched against everybody pick up top m1 elements pick here top m1 elements or m2 elements mm elements and then combine this get to get best m of them best m of them means there will be some of them common right all of them a person is lying in all of them he is one of the top most probable candidate there will be one of them you will find one of them he is not been caught here but in the remaining he has been found he may be the second best and so on is it ok. So, you get m 1 of them m 2 of them m m of them and then obtain the intersection to get the top m elements. So, it has also some positive thing the person who has been missed out he will not be missed out here, but what you are losing that you have to do 1 to n comparison for each cases right. Now, another way one can think one can think that why not the hybrid approach some of them some of them you go for the low cost one you go for total and high cost one you go do not go for the total because low cost one it will be throwing those people who are exact who are not at all a member of this right and a slight match he will be in you can take that yes slight match means that see a person will be out falsely rejected because of the threshold value only he will be falsely rejected. So, there will be some matching score will be there it is not that it will be near 0 it will be near the threshold value. So, if you follow this method those people will be in and through hybrid approach the then you put the costliest one to determine who are actually member of that that will be known if you put that way 
they if you follow that method. Now, let us talk a little about our work here. What we have done, there is a concept of soft biometrics that will be discussed why we need the soft biometrics, why we will be telling the, the how to reduce the search space. Now, this we have the face biometric system, fingerprint biometric system, signature, iris, ear and so on and all of them gives you the score and confuse them to get a few score and based on the threshold value you decide whether he is accepted or rejected, right. Also sometimes what we do that we obtain the features, we obtain the features here, features here, features and then you combine all the features to get one features and use that feature for matching purpose. Now, depending upon the depending upon the see the in some cases the number of variables in the feature points or number of feature points in against a feature vector may not be fixed, it may be variable. So, corresponding adjustment is required. Otherwise, what happens? The suppose this is the feature vector for trait T1 and this is the feature vector for trait 2 and here there may be a chaos condition. So, what you have to do? You have to make it fixed otherwise Otherwise, so you will not be knowing whether this is this feature vector is for this or this one. So, some method you have to follow to keep track that this is the feature vector element for this feature trait and this is for that other one. And also you have to keep it in mind that this feature vector also should be such that they form similar type of see one is on binary pattern, another one is on uh, real domain, then there may be little problem to represent the data. So, you have to be careful that if it is the on real domain, then if you put the binary pattern concatenation may not be a good way you can do it because this is a 4 byte information and this is only 1 bit information. So, it may be a little problem, right. So, we, we have done on feature level and also on score level, decision level we have not done much work and also not on sensor level fusion. Now, what you have in input? Input you have some images of different traits, so, right. It is not necessary that face image and signature image this way you will be getting. Some of them will be there, some of them will not be there. And you have the state, this is true for any pattern recognition problem that you have to get a data acquisition system. You need to have the pre-processing pre-processing means that you need to do certain type of correction say for example, I have to get the region of interest because I have taken a photograph where your face is there also your neck is also there background is there I do not need your background I do not need your neck and other things only I need your face. So, I have to extract this feature region. So, if I give you the hand data I do not know do not need the whole hand data I need the only the palm area. So, the palm print or the region of extension is required, then lot many noises, different types of noise may be there. So, those noise you like to eliminate, but you have to keep it in mind that you are not, you are not uh, losing the features, because then sometimes a, a feature can become looks like a noise. You have to ensure that also there is a need of stretching the contrast, so the features can be visible. So, those operations you will be doing in this case from that image, from that image you have to extract the features, right. Different types of features will be coming that will be as that as a you will be doing the term paper, you will be knowing all these things and finally, matcher is required to match and draw the conclusion whether it is matched or not. So, so this is clear. So, some of you possibly will be working on this in the term paper, some of you will be doing working here or here. So, this is uh, in our system accuracy level. So, what we expect from you that your results whoever will be doing the recognition things results should be better than this. So, this is the benchmark for you. So, I want better than this, right. And if you get the better results, I can assure you that 5 additional mark also I can give against your end term. So, this is a everything is given 5 additional marks. 
subject to the condition it cannot exceed 100 marks that is the thing. So, I want data set is given to you everything is given and I do not want this one because uh, this is uh, not under your you take one of them any one of them who some of you have taken already ideas some of you have taken fingerprint and other things signature also we have not given you face here I think some of you are working. So, you take and take the challenge there is nothing and they are achievable 94 percent it is achievable up to 96 it is achievable only thing is that you need little extra effort and that is the reason why mentor wants to sit with you mentor wants to discuss because they have also interest to achieve more than this. Now, in the case of identification verification data is very simple. So, the I you know after that boy left from my room I feel I felt bad I should have shown him the answer books. So, the critical issues are for identifications see this is one to many problems. So, as you know that this is the issue is number of comparisons how much how many comparisons I have to give and how to retrieve the data and search time. See retrieving data is not any easy because you know your RAM memory area itself will be very costly because you can think about what how many GB in RAM maybe 8 GB 16 GB 32 GB, but is a very he is talking about 10 to the power 10 or some size of database. So, page fault will be increased all sorts of thing will be there right. So, ultimately you have to think about these three terms what is one is classification another one is clustering another one is indexing. Now, what is the difference between the classification and clustering? Any idea? The terms you have heard, right? Classification and classification as a divides group. One is supervised and another unsupervised. The classification is based on the super based on your idea is given, say male, female, right? Or the different age groups, or maybe uh, that ear shape, right? Height weight like that you can think, but some of them are fixed some of them are not fixed. So, weight is variable age is variable. So, you cannot consider perfectly this clustering is not that clustering is based on your characteristics based on your characteristics means say feature points you have the feature points based on the feature points you want to cluster them right. So, there are some several clustering technique exists right? K means clustering technique you have heard the term fuzzy clustering techniques right those type of clustering technique exist. And it is uh, K means is the best known clustering technique provided you know the value of K how many clusters you have to make. In reality in reality in the case of biometric system the if I know that K is I know the value of K then I have solved several things this is not known. Second thing is the think about this fingerprint which is 1 inch by 1 inch the 100 points are there and they, there must be some point there very closely associated very closely how can you cluster them right. So, this is these are also big issue and classification if I make it a gender one gender based then you are reducing by half say I have 100 core people reducing by half also another core people right it uh, you know 100 it will be 50 core such will not be that much effective. Indexing is another one where we can spend time we can do something that you arrange the data in such a way that get a data from the then you try to index the get a proper index for that query image and go to that searching area. So, can you can you index the data in such a way that the, the index data will be in some order. So, that searching time will be reduced. So, we are not spending much time towards this one we are spending time to this one. So, classification what we, we can easily I told you the age group can be a cons can be considered middle age group young age group based on the rate of birth you can think gender is one year lobular form this smaller part that is everybody has different time right, but not too many size six size type of things. 
then your shape triangular oval like the shapes are there that is four or five shapes. So, these are can be considered for classifications right this is whatever I have told earlier there is a thing I think this is or oh, whatever results we have obtained that also I should tell we have the database of roughly 2000, but top one best match right 1518 of them right having the rank one right and the coverage is 1106 that are covered. So, rank 16 is the you know very poor, but the result is that 1831 data is lying in that and data covered is 7 only right. So, this is the performance moderately good performance that is the reason why I am telling that our performance is not that bad except that size of the number database size is less. See rank 1 top 1 rank I am looking for right. So, what I have got that 1518 cases I got that rank 1 out of that whatever right and data covered means that how much data I have covered the data there is a, there is a term will be coming penetration rate and hit rate. So, those term will will be covering the identification. So, data coverage is 1106 here 60 percent rank, but rank 60 I because I am telling that my data is lying in the top 60 I am happy the police department they never tell that I want the best match I want that moderately reduced size and my search zone will be less then I will do other method to pick them. What they do basically they suppose I understand that this the crime has occurred then I have that in that locality what say 10,000 people are there. So, all of them are not not performing the same crime. So, based on that crime effect they bring up the search area very small then they do the other method to obtain the who is the who has committed the crime. Same thing if I get the top one rank matched right that means, he is the best match he is the person directly I am telling and top rank 60 means that my person is lying in the top 60 one of them it may be first rank it may be second rank it may be 60th rank right. So, that is the idea then what for we are thinking about identity see I am looking for proving my identity. So, there must be some attacker who wants to prove himself as an same identity or he wants to he does not want to prove himself the same identity this is one of the thing is true right. So, otherwise why one should test for his identity if all can be trusted. So, what is our aim our aim the ability of a biometric system to stand up to the zero effect attacker is measured by false acceptance rate that is that means, zero level attack means your false acceptance rate should be zero right this FAR you want to make it zero. So, that there is no false attack. So, this false attack can come in different way in the case of face facial recognition or facial system I can come with the makeup or extra hair or glasses in the case of fingerprint I can cut after cutting my fingers and so on. So, different level because these are all hostiles one, but this can occur in the case of biometric system. So, ultimately if you see carefully this is nothing but behavioral physiological physiological characteristics that is the things you consider for biometric state and your vulnerability in a biometric security results either incorrect recognition or failure to recognized correctly either it will incorrectly recognized right falsely accepted or failure to recognize correctly right individuals that means, these are the two ways that the false acceptance and false suggestion rate war has come. Now, this definition includes the methods to falsely accept an individual which is nothing but the template or feature regeneration right 
that what I will be doing? I will be generating the features for you and falsely accepted. This is possible, attacker will be doing that one. Then impact overall performance. This is another parameter that I put, a, I am an attacker, I want to show that your system is poor. So that the organizer will change your system by another system and that system is saleable. That system is under my control. It may so happen, right? So, impact overall system performance, then denial of service. So, that is the thing I am telling that I, I suppose you have a system and I am an attacker, I will try to prove that your system is bad. That means false acceptance, a false rejection rate is, I have increased by some method. So, every body, every general genuine users will be out. They will be told that no, you are not a user. So, inconvenience will be high and then the organization will think that this system is no good, I want to change it. So, that is possible to attack another system via leaked data and also use through this system, suppose I have logged in and I could make the access control, then I can go to the other system and spoil that one. That is also possible, so identity theft is coming in between. So, this attacker has a major role to play to spoil your system in different ways. So, what is the challenge in biometrics algorithms? The people's biometric features vary both within the challenge with ch both with changes in feature themselves, right? Cut in fingers, facial wrinkles, etc. Based on that, there will be a change in your features. And also with the presentation and sensor environment, right? Present the way you are presenting your data. Sometimes you know uh, you will like to make the system full by putting the 50 percent of fingerprint or like this. Right? That is also, and you want to test whether it is I am being accepted or not. Sometimes due to the weather atmosphere, that temperature is very high, or the your humidity condition is very high. So, that, that may affect the U.S. system. So, with the presentation sensor environment, right, you may be giving the different type of feature factors, right. Say, biometric system must reject natural and environmental changes. That is your first part, that natural change and natural change means that your face gets changed after 5 years or 10 years. So, a system must be robust against that. System must be robust against the any change due to the environment, right? Atmospheric condition is poor. So, system should not uh, stop you, should not throw you out that you are not matched. Because if, if, if you are throwing out that, that type of cases, then the chances of false acceptance and false rejection rate would be high. So, the attacker will get an opportunity to enter into your system. 